When the sun decides to actually come out here in the UK, there is no better way of celebrating than getting all your mates around for a tasty bit of barbecued meat. Well, Andy here from the Royal Institution YouTube page has kindly invited me to the Faraday Lecture Theatre, the home of the Royal Institution, for our own barbecue feast. This is going to be a barbecue without a barbecue. That's the challenge. I haven't brought any coals today, so we're going to be having to find our own way of cooking this meat. Here on the Brit Lab channel, Andy and I are going to cook a steak in a pretty extremely hazardous, chemically kind of way. Yeah. yeah. And then over on the, uh, the Royal Institution YouTube channel, we're going to be using some extreme physics to cook our meat. So we have a steak. Chefs will like to age it. They will yeah. like to hang up their meat in order to tenderise it. Well, we don't have that long. Yeah. So we're actually going to use digestive juices. Lovely. This is hydrochloric acid. It's produced in special types of cells in the body called parietal cells. And if you actually want to mix up a proper gastric juice cocktail, you need to add potassium chloride, some sodium chloride, and a whole bunch of enzymes as well. So we're just going to use conch HCL. Yeah, why not? Let's give it a try. Safety goggles on. This is obviously a steak, it's meat. Meat is just the muscle tissue of an animal for us, a cow. It's about 75% water, 20% protein, 5% fats, carbs yeah. that we're essentially cooking. So right now, all the protein molecules, the muscle fibers are all curled up. Mm -hmm. And when you cook them, when you normally heat it, what they do is they uncurl. Okay. You denature the proteins and that's what kind of tenderizes it. So let's go for it. All right, how much do we go for? Just cover it. Look at that! What's going on in there? Wow! That's really quick. What happens is the HCL activates an enzyme called pepsinogen mm -hmm. and actually turns it into pepsin and that breaks down the peptide bonds within the proteins. You pretty much lost me, but... Weird! Wow! Look at that! Looks good. Do we think that looks... Yeah, I'll eat that. Oh, we should probably say, don't try this at home. No, don't try this no, at home. No, really don't. <laughs> Stage two involves a, uh, a special ingredient. Andy, reveal the ingredient. Okay. Nitrogen is all around us in the air, 75% of the air around us at room temperature and pressure. But if you cool it down below 196 degrees Celsius, which is minus 320-ish Fahrenheit for anyone who uses those sorts of numbers, um, then what you get is it condenses into a liquid and you get liquid nitrogen. In fact, if you cool it down even further, like below minus 200 and something, it'll actually freeze solid and you can get solid nitrogen, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Ready? Yep. It's going in. What's great about liquid nitrogen is it's got a really low viscosity, so it flows really well. So it flows into all the nooks and crannies of the steak. And you can see all these bubbles on top. And what's happening is that when anything over that minus 196 degrees hits the steak, it heats up and it causes the liquid nitrogen to boil. And that means that you actually get a layer of gaseous nitrogen and then the liquid nitrogen on top of that. It's called the Leidenfrost effect and you can see it kind of beading and flying around all over the top. Like that, perfect, thank you steak. Love it when science works. Yeah. Because what it's doing is it's turning the outside of the steak really hard. Yeah. And then what they say is you deep fry it. Wow. And what that does is it means the outer side crisps up really quickly, but the inside remains uncooked. And apparently it gives you perfect steak. Amazing. Right. Make a little kind of thermite volcano, I think. Thermite kind of is essentially any mix of a metal powder and also a, a metal oxide. We're using the standard thermite mix. So this is um, aluminium powder mixed with Fe203, so iron oxide, essentially rust. We need to kickstart it with a bit of magnesium. What temperature cool. will this burn at? So this, I don't know exactly, this will burn at probably over a thousand degrees, which is plenty hot enough to get that Enough to get that going. There you go, dude. Yes! There we go. Oh, that's it! Fry! That's awesome. So now we've got um, like a little pool of molten iron, which is still really, really hot. How's it look? Singed. Yeah. <laughs> we cooked one side of the steak, um, and then we had an idea. 
maybe we'll just put the thermite straight on it. Okay, go, 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 go. <laughs> All I can see <laughs> is the one lump of molten iron. That is amazing. I think we should go in. Okay. This is looking a bit more like one of my barbecues. <laughs> Right, so, okay, so here's the iron. Oh, you want that bit a bit more cooked, sir? Okay. <laughs> oh, the, the edge just there, let me just sear it for you. Andy. Yeah. Of the RI channel. What do we think? Have we successfully cooked a piece of steak? In a way, yeah, <laughs> maybe. We, we tenderized it yeah. by essentially digesting it with hydrochloric acid. Then yeah. we flash froze it using liquid nitrogen, because yeah. apparently that's the thing now. And then we decided to cook it with uh, thermite. Yeah, which probably it, isn't going to be the thing. Which is probably not going to be the thing. I mean, I think deep frying <laughs> it probably would have been a better shout. Anyway, guys, hope you liked it. Uh, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you want more of this stuff on Brit Lab, hit subscribe and follow the link now that we're going to put up to go over and see Andy and I trying to cook a bit of steak, but this time using extreme physics techniques. Scrape off the sand. And the iron. And the iron. Ignore the, the acid. Yeah. And you've got a perfectly good steak yeah. that we then ruined. Yeah. <laughs>